Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. It's good to see all of you. It's always nice to have the sun coming through the stained glass windows, but don't we wish we were getting more rain too? But anyway, it's good to have you here. I'm Pastor Naomi Mahler. I am here with Pastor Dean Johnson and Pastor David Sievertson and uh, a group of our Calvary youth as we get ready to go on our summer trip Uh, a service trip to Duluth. We'll have a commissioning for that in just a little bit in the service. We've also had lots of life celebrations uh, this week, Um, and so you might note in the bulletin that Vern and Millie Buer are celebrating their 57th wedding anniversary and sponsoring the bulletins today, so we want to send well wishes to Vern and Millie. You know that is no small feat to reach 57 years together, so. And then I don't see him here this morning, but if you see him during uh, the week, you can uh, maybe wish Pastor Ron Hansen, a former pastor here, happy birthday. It's his 80th birthday today, Uh, so we wish him well. Joyce Edwardson had a birthday party yesterday, 100 years old, Um, and so that was wonderful to be a part of a celebration for her. Her birthday was Thursday, and she happens to share that birthday with Pastor Dean. Now, some of you might think he's 100 years old, too, but (laughs) he's not quite there. (laughs) He's not quite there, and we're glad he's around, too. So just... and. You know, these are things that we hear of. We, we sometimes hesitate to announce them because we don't want to leave people out, but if we hear of it, we will, you know, try to share it. We maybe will miss things, but we wish you all well, and congratulations on all those milestones in your life. So let us now take a moment of silence and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please stand as we sing our gathering song, All Are Welcome. All are welcome, friend and stranger, at the banquet of the Savior. All are welcome, all are welcome here. From the woman who comes crying, leaving tears at Jesus' feet, to the man who knows the right way but cannot see. All are welcome, friend and stranger, at the banquet of the Savior. All are welcome, all are welcome here. 
from the ones who feel forgotten and those who sense their place is gone to the ones who live in hunger here you belong all are welcome the friend and stranger at the banquet of the savior all are welcome all are welcome here go into the streets and cities to the farms and families tell about the splendid table God's mercy all are welcome friend and stranger at the banquet of the Savior all are welcome all are welcome here The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I invite our youth to come up here to the steps. And if there's any other children that would like to come up, if, don't let the big kids scare you. They're pretty nice. And so come on up too. Maybe Calvary, older youth kind of sit on one side and then leave another side for the littles. <laughs> Hi, hello, good morning, good to see you, come on up. Hi honey, good morning. You're enjoying summer, come on up, yeah, okay. Do you want to go sit with Grace or Sophia? There we go, yeah. Oh, I'm so glad to have all of you up here, and I'm glad that you younger kids are up here because our older kids are going to need your help and your support. They're going to need you to help pray for them this week because they're going to go do some work to serve other people. Who knows what the word serve means or service? Does anyone know what that word means? If you serve someone, what does that mean? Colby. To help someone, yeah, right. You help someone. And so sometimes there's places where it says self-serve. It means you're supposed to help yourself. But we're going to go do service for other people. Yes, do you have something to add? That is my squishy. That's your squishy. That looks like a cool squishy. Yeah, nice. You know, and your squishy can... That's good. That's fun to have. I like that. So who knows? So this week, our, our older kids are going to go help some people with some housing stuff. I think we're going to get to do some painting, and we're, we're going to help paint a house, maybe, I think, indoors, maybe a little something, not too much, but some painting, maybe some minor repairs. We're going to help clean up some trails or some parks in Duluth. We're going to um, go to another church, and we're going to help another church that doesn't have a lot of money, and we're going to help paint at another church. And then I think we might help at a food shelf or something like that, too. It's with a place that helps all kinds of people who are really poor, who don't have money to get food and to have good houses. Now, doesn't that sound like something good to do that these kids are going to do this week? Huh? to help people who are poor, who don't have money. That's what we're going to go do. So the way you can help with that is that you can think about them this week, and then you can say a little prayer, and you can say, Dear God, be with my friends from Calvary in Duluth this week. You want to say something? You saw some poor people sometimes? Yeah, sometimes they're like standing on the street and they need help. Yes. 
you've got a coin. Yeah, that, you can give that to poor people and help sometimes. I love how generous you all are, and you're thinking of other people. See, and you're teaching our older kids of what they're going to have to do this week. You want to say one more thing? One more thing? Yeah, and this is my squishy from Penny. Yeah, and you've got a squishy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And there might be kids who are so poor they can't have a squishy. So we'll think of them and maybe try to find some stuff for them. So now I'm going to ask these kids to stand up, and I'm wondering if you younger, if they could kind of clump together here in the middle, and you younger kids could stand around them, okay? So let the big kids stand up first and kind of clump together, make a circle and clump together. All right? Come in the middle, guys, because the little kids have to circle you. Come on. Okay? And now, little kids, see if you can kind of stand around them, okay? Stand around them. Stand around. And Pastor David's going to help us say a prayer to be ready to go, okay? So, big kids, look out this way. All right? And you little kids, you come stand right by us here, okay? Okay, let's all pray for this group as they go on their trip this week. Oh God, our beginning and end of our, all our journeys, you kept Abraham and Sarah in safety throughout the days of their pilgrimage. You led the children of Israel through the midst of the sea, and by a star you led the Magi to the baby Jesus. Protect and guide them now as they set out to travel, and protect us all as we set out in our own work, and life. Make all of our ways safe and our homecomings joyful, and bring us at last to our heavenly home, where you dwell in glory with our Lord Jesus Christ and the life-giving Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And let's all say, ready? We're going to say amen. 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 All right. So when you get older, maybe you'll want to take a trip like this someday with us too. But for now, thanks for coming up. Okay. Thanks, girls. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you. (laughs) The Holy Gospel for this day is found in the fifth chapter of Mark. And would you please stand as you are able for the reading this day. Pastor David spoke last week about Jesus and the storm. The storm is over. Jesus is now on the shore, and he has two encounters. First, uh, Jairus, who was a well-known person of power in the synagogue, came and begged Jesus to come and heal his daughter. And then Jesus encountered a woman who had been sick for 12 years. And so I invite you this morning to think about how Jesus touched these people and how we, how we touch people in our lives is a matter of faith. So reading from Mark chapter 5, Jesus went back across to the other side of the lake. There at the lakeside, a large crowd gathered around him. Jairus, an official of the local synagogue, arrived, and when he saw Jesus, he threw himself down at his feet and begged him earnestly, My little daughter is very sick. Please come and place your hands on her so she will get well and live. Then Jesus started off with him. So many people were going along with Jesus, and they were crowding him from every side. There was a woman who had suffered terribly from severe bleeding for 12 years, even though she had been treated by many doctors. She had spent all her money, but instead of getting better, she got worse all the time. She had heard about Jesus, so she came in the crowd behind, saying to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will get well. She touched his cloak, and her bleeding stopped at once, and she had the feeling inside herself that she was healed of her troubles. At once, Jesus knew that power had gone out of him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, You see how the people are crowding you? Why do you ask who touched you? 
But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. The woman realized what had happened to her, so she came, trembling with fear, knelt at his feet, and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, My daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your troubles. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel this day. And you may be seated. Pastor Naomi, as you are making your comments, be a little careful. Just remember who's signing your paycheck these days. Seriously, I want to thank Pastor Naomi, Pastor David, and uh, Janelle. They have been working feverishly over the last few weeks. They were at Camp House up by the North Shore, Green Lake Bible Camp, Camp House. They're going up to Duluth. We have a day camp in concert with Bethel and Vinji. You'll see a big tent out here in a few weeks. It's a lot of hard work, and we thank you. The folks you saw up here earlier, that's the congregation of the future. In 5, 10, 15 years, many of us will be gone in different capacities. You are the congregation. You are Calvary as we begin to think about our 150th anniversary. And so we thank you for your commitment of going to camp, your parents' commitment, and for the congregation's commitment in these matters. And so I asked the question this morning, have you been touched by anyone emotionally or spiritually? Has someone else in life made a difference by who they are and the way they have treated you? Well, we touch people in various ways. Intentionally and unintentionally, physically we touch them by good handshake. A good handshake means a lot. It means that it's good to see you or if appropriate a good hug. And we do it most often almost every day. Or yes, a smile just a smile, can impact how someone else's day is going to go. To know that another human being at least smiled at you, maybe they did shake your hand or maybe they did give you a, did give you a hug. And then the words we say are extremely important, extremely important. How we say them, when we say them, and the meaning behind them are extremely important. It's the way we reach out, the way we touch people, the way we relate to people, the words that we say can be words of encouragement or words of judgment, no doubt about it. And then we're also touched by God. Sometimes we don't think about that, but we are in fact touched by God each and every day of our life. From Mark chapter 5, as I read, Jairus, he was a big shot, big shot in the church, big shot in the synagogue. He knew all the rules. I'm sure he had money. He had influence. And he heard Jesus was in the neighborhood, so he went to Jesus. He got on his knees, and he begged him, Jesus, my daughter is sick. She is dying. Please, Jesus, please touch her. Here was a man humbled by the illness of his own daughter. And then another woman came, a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. The scriptures say she spent all her money going to the doctors and nothing happened. She wasn't healed. And Jesus touched her and she was healed. Touching physically in appropriate ways, emotionally, and spiritually is very important. 
And so this morning, let us explore very briefly how we might be influenced by the touching of other people and how we're touched by God. Emotionally. The deep, dark side of emotional touching is that in our day and age of bullying. It's pretty easy to get on your cell phone and say something inappropriate to someone, push send, and hopefully you have a nice day. Or the words we say in school or in the workplace or even at home, we call it bullying. Or sometimes we're just plain cynical. Cynicism comes from hidden anger. I'm angry about things in life, and I'm going to say something cutting to somebody. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to intentionally hurt you. I'm going to bring you down. That's touching people in a very inappropriate and negative way. But to touch people in a very positive way is wonderful. The words we say, you look nice today, you smile at someone, it makes their day. Just this week, I received a handwritten card. Most of us received texts, emails. I received a handwritten card that made my day. Thank you, Pastor Dean for coming to my graduation party. You made my day. Thanks for being my confirmation teacher. God bless. Boy, did I have a good day. Just one person taking 30 seconds, writing on a card, sending it to the pastor. Do you know how you can influence and make someone's day by a note, a text, an email, a smile? You can change their day, and you have touched their life in a most appropriate way. The football coach of the Minnesota Gophers, P.J. Fleck, often talks about he recruits talent. He recruits abilities based on high school performance. But he said once they come to practice and once they get into the game, it takes more than that. He said it takes encouragement from the coaches and myself to these young men that they're going to do well. They have talent and ability, and they're just as strong as their opponent. They're just as fast as their opponent. They have a future. And he talks to them about their future They're there for four or five years playing football, but after football, you have a future in the job market, in the corporate world. You are someone. You are important. Imagine hearing from a coach of a Big Ten university those words to a young man that probably has never heard positive things before. Words matter. The words we say deeply matter as we touch others and their lives. Now, God touches us spiritually. Pastor Naomi talked to you young people. You're going to Duluth. God speed to you. May you learn. May you found, find new experiences in your life. But whether you know it, you're going to touch people. You're going to make a difference in the lives of people in Duluth, emotionally and spiritually. Just like Jesus was God's son and God's servant, you are God's children. We are God's children, and we make a difference. And you will make a difference for the life of those that you meet this week in Duluth, whether it be at the food shelf, whether it be painting the church, whether simply 
making a new friend. You are touching the lives of people emotionally and spiritually. You are doing God's work. Whether we realize it or not, God touches us. He touched us from the very beginning in our birth. He touched us in our baptism. He touches us in Holy Communion. He touches us in the hearing and the preaching of the Word. He touches us by you being here this morning with other believers in the community of faith. This is not just another event that you've attended on a Sunday morning. You are in the presence of God in His church, and God hopefully is touching you. One of the things that I remember from days in the seminary, from the class of preaching and homiletics, as difficult as it is from time to time in the struggles that we preachers have, Professor Erdahl says to us, how are you going to touch people? How are you going to make a difference in the lives of the hearers? How are you going to make a difference in the lives of those who hear you? How are you going to influence them? And Pastor Dave and Pastor Naomi and any other preacher, we know how we struggle with that. And all we can do and say is may God use us through the Word and the sacrament to touch you spiritually in your life. God sometimes touches us in healing. No, not all prayers are answered in that regard. We have heard the begging of people praying for their loved ones who have an illness or have been in an accident. We hear and see those prayers, but we know that God is present. This past year, yes, there have been members of Calvary who have suffered from COVID-19, the virus. We've had the honor and privilege at times to be in the hospital, gowned up with them. And this one individual who I knew was coming to life's end with other illnesses as well, and his wife was there. And he said, I know that God will be with me. And now it's time to die. Within the hour, he passed away. So we sometimes wonder in this busy, stressful world, is God present? Yes, he is. He's present in your life. He's present in mine. He's present in this congregation. He'll be present with you young people as you go to Duluth. And look for ways that you can emotionally and spiritually impact the lives of other people because you have the abilities to do it and God will give you the gifts. You're not just going on a trip to the North Shore. This congregation and God is asking you to go and to serve as well as the rest of us this week in our life. Two situations where Jesus was standing and Jairus came and said, please heal my daughter. And at the end of the verse, the daughter was healed. And the woman who had struggled for 12 years was also healed. Why? Because Jesus touched their life. And so as we go our way this week, look for opportunities. Look for opportunities how you may touch in a positive way the lives of other people. And each of us is given opportunities to do that in our homes, our families, our neighbors, Duluth, or wherever life may take you. At the end of Mark, he concludes this. Go in peace 
and be healed of your troubles. The members and guests of Calvary go in peace. To the young people, Pastor Naomi, Janelle, Brian, go in peace. Make a difference. Engage other people, and you will touch them, and they will remember it for the rest of their life. Amen. compassion love that's never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior the hope of nations My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. find me all my fears and failures fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I serve is mighty to save, Jesus is mighty to save, forever author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave, shine your light and let the whole world see, we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. And now with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to take a moment to share the peace. time we'd invite the ushers to come forward to receive the morning offering. be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. And let us come now before God in prayer. God of hope, the ministry of your church extends across borders, from nearby neighbors to far and distant countries. Accompany all those who labor eagerly in service of the gospel, that through your good news all might experience transformation. Be especially with our youth and leaders who travel to Duluth this week for a service learning experience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the land that provides our food. 
Thank you for the rain this morning, and we pray you to continue to send rain to the areas that need it most. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we pray for nations and their leaders. Give them a spirit of compassion and steer them towards a fair distribution of resources that none among us would have too much or too little. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, your touch has the power to make us whole. We pray for those who suffer physically or mentally or in all ways. Embrace those who are sick, especially Don Thompson, Donnie Chemnitz, and Karen Lee. Surround them with your unwavering presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this assembly for Calvary Lutheran and all those gathered together in worship, whether here in person or wherever they might be. Revive our spirits, renew our relationships, and rekindle our faith that we might experience resurrection in this community. Thank you for the transformational week of camp that our youth experienced this past week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful ancestors in every age whose lives have pointed us towards you. And today we especially remember Kathy Peterson. Envelop Kathy and her family and all of us in your love that we may be reunited with one another in the last days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we just have a few announcements this morning. Um, Again, we... We pray for our youth and leaders as they go to Duluth this week. Continue to keep them in their prayers as they come home with many wonderful stories, I'm sure. Uh, We pray again for Kathy Peterson and that family as Kathy died yesterday. And that service will be here Thursday, July 1st at 11 a.m. Some of the details are still pending, but this Thursday at 11 We invite you to come join us for coffee in the Friendship Room right after worship today. And we also invite you on Wednesdays for our outside worship service at 5.30 out at the Pavilion. It's been a wonderful experience so far and we look forward to continuing that. And then last of all, we have an opportunity for Calvary families and friends to join us at the Dorothy Olson Aquatic Center on July 8th. Uh, after hours from 7 to 9 p.m. So uh, please sign up for that. It's been great to have you in worship this morning. Wherever you are, God's blessings be with you. As we sing our sending song, all the people said amen. You are not alone if you are lonely when you feel afraid you're not the only we are all the same in need of mercy to be forgiven and be free it's all you've got to lean on but thank God it's all you need and all the people said amen oh and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. If you're rich or poor, it does not matter. Weak or strong, you know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. 
And he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said, Amen. Whoa, and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. Blessed are the people hungry for another start. For theirs is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all the people said, Amen. Whoa, and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. And all the people said, Amen. Now before you go, receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Be upon you now and forever. Amen. And now go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.